morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it might be in your time. Welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today I'm going to walk you through an entire step-by-step -step tutorial on how I make my stickers and decals using sublimation on Oracle or JPI Blanks House Vinyl. So I recently discovered, um, before I discovered that you could use JPI Blanks, I discovered that you could use Oracle 651 White and um, sublimate onto that and create a full color decal without layering. <laughs> Amazing stuff. I was really stoked because I hate layering. I am not a person for layering. I suck at it. Um, so being able to print a full color decal without um, layering or any of that headache was really awesome to me. So we're going to go through the whole process. I'm going to show you how to create a sticker or decal in Design Space and then we're going to show you how to press it using sublimation ink, a um, sublimation printer, and Oracle 651. Let's dive in, shall we? Let's go. Alrighty, so I have my design space open. I'm going to go over here to my uploaded images and just pick a couple of random um, images so that you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one that's kind of complex like this one. And then I'm going to do a simple one like this guy, girl, pretty kitty. All right. So we're going to do those two. We're going to do one for white vinyl, one for clear vinyl. So, uh, duh, I didn't want to do that. Go back. Upload. What did I do? That one, that one. <laughs> I just like the wrong button over here. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are going to upload. We're going to separate them. I'm going to make Kitty Cat a little bit bigger. I usually like to have my stickers and decals about three to four inches high and three to four inches wide. Um, they can be as big as you want them to be. No restrictions on that. So we're going to do an offset. You can cut it like this, but I promise you it's a headache and I don't think it's worth it to me. I like to have an offset, so I use the offset. It's there, use it. So you want to look for a couple of things when using the offset. You see here that it's got a really good outline. However, it's got this one random little cut right in the middle. So what I do then is I play with it. So I'll go up to 2 point, or 0.27 and see what that does. There it goes. See? That little random cut right there is gone. And that's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and apply that one. Now, because I'm doing sublimation, I do not want the outline to be gray. I want it to be white because it's going on a white sticker. So why not white? Um, but if I was to do yellow background, it would show up as yellow if I wanted to do that bright yellow. Or I could even do print then cut and I could go over to pattern and throw on one of these pattern backgrounds, which is what I want to do. I think I want it to look pretty cool. And do, do, do. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, what about this guy? This one looks pretty cool. Come on. I like that one a lot. So we're going to go with that one. Then we're going to select the whole image. And we're going to flatten it. Flatten. And what that does is it puts the two together so that when it goes through the Cricut, it's going to only cut this outline and nothing else. All right. So we're going to go over here, do the same thing with Kitty Cat. And I feel like that's too big for Kitty Cat, so we're going to try 0.23. See what that looks like. I like that. We could also try 0.20. You'll notice that as some, and I did a whole video on the offset feature. As you go smaller, the lines do get a bit more rigid, and if you have more of a complex design, it's going to start overlapping and look really wonky, and we don't want that. 
So we're going to leave it at 0 0.20 for kitty cat here. Hit apply. And then again, I don't want the black background. I'm just going to do white for this one. Eh. Give me the, no, I want these. Here we go. White. And then we're going to select the whole thing and select flatten. All right. So now we have our two stickers. We're going to go ahead and do print and cut. And I'm actually going to duplicate these because I hate wasting paper. So I want to get more than just two stickers on a piece of sublimation paper. So let's see how many we can get if we put them close together. So we've got, it does a 9.25 by 6.75. So I am literally right in the limits here. Um, and actually, no, I'm not. It's not going to let me because it's 8 point by 8 point. That ain't going to work. These are too big. So we're going to make these just a little bit smaller size. I want to make sure that I get enough in here. Do do. How's that work? This is going to be 7 point. Still too big. Ignore any background noise. I have children and they're being obnoxious this today. All right, so let's see about that. Uh, six point, all right, we're good on that one. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do, oh no! Kitty cat, go back. We just wanna make sure that we're not overlapping this kitty with that kitty makes it kind of hard because you can't see the outline. Ah, no. Cancel. Don't want to do that. I want to do this. <clears throat> there we go. The grid lines will help. You see, yeah, I was like right on the border there. Right, so I want to duplicate these two. Maybe. Maybe just one of them. Mm -hmm. Too wide, so kitty cat, you gotta go. I like she got mad hustle and dope soap. Alright, so we are ah, almost within the limits. And so it's kitty cat. Wonder if we turn <coughs> kitty cat sideways. This part's not super important or relevant, but it is because I hate wasting paper. So I may get work. We need 8.67 by 6. God, son of a biscuit. The kitty cats. Be steel in the way. The other way that you can, um, no, go back to canvas. Uh, shapes. Square. The other really easy way to do this is to take a square, unlock it, do 6.75 by 9.25, and that is the surface you get to work with. But I want 9.25 by 6.75. So this is what we're going to do. Arrange that, send that to the back. And see, it looks like it should fit, but it don't fit. So we're going to scooch this one over a bit and then scooch this one. Maybe we'll flip this guy and this guy. Because I got a little more room over here for kitty cat. There we go. Voila. Put that right on the edge. Bring this kitty cat down a little bit. And now you can see that all of the pieces and parts are where they should be. You can delete. Oh, no. I want to delete the background, not the kitty cat. Then you want to select the whole thing and select unflatten. And then select the whole thing. Holy crap. Design space. Work with me here. And then you want to flatten the entire image so that it creates one over here. See? One image. That way, when you go over to make it, 
it's going to automatically put them all on one sheet. Now, here's the tricky part for my end. I have my printer set to sublimation. Um, it's a preset that I created, which means that I don't need to mirror my images because my printer does it for me. Now, if your printer isn't already set up for mirroring, you have to mirror your project. Mirror your project, because if you don't have it set up, it's going to go the other direction. Um, and if you don't have a sublimation printer, this method will not work for you. Um, if you don't and you know how to use the print then cut with the offset, then you can just do this and um, use print then cut and use sticker paper or you can watch my sticker tutorial video. Um, I recently fell in love with this and that's why we're doing this one. So this is for sublimation printers from this point forward. Um, <clears throat> I have mine set up to mirror, so I don't need a mirror. If you do, just come over here and select mirror. Alrighty, so we're going to hit continue. I'm going to pop open my printer real quick because it says that it's offline and I want to make sure that it's awake and ready to go. So we're going to send this to the printer. I'm going to go put some paper in my printer. Um, but see, I don't want the bleed. And I don't, I do want to use the system dialog. And because my printer is not filled with paper yet, I'm going to go do that and then I'll do that. Do this. So I have two printers selected. Make sure that you have the right one done. Okay. Come over here to my printer. Put in a sheet of paper. All right, and then we are going to select print. And then because I'm using the system dialog and you should as well, we are going to wait for this to pop up in the background because that's what it does. Hide that so that I can see. <laughs> there it is. All right, so I already have it set to the way that I want it, sublimation. I use um, matte paper. I use A sub uh, 125 GSM, and I ha currently have Printer's Jack ink in my printer. And the setting that I use for my paper is photo matte paper on best. All right, and then we hit print, and then it goes over to the printer. And then from there, we're gonna go over here, sublimate, and then I'll come back to design space. Um, so I'm gonna hop on over to the camera and then I'll see you in a second. Alrighty, so I have got my heat press all ready to go. It is set to 330 degrees for 25 seconds. That's 330 for 25 seconds. So I've got my print ready to go and yes they have the black border because I'm going to use the Cricut machine to cut it so you do need it for this specific sublimation trick all right and then I've got my clear vinyl cut and I've got my white vinyl cut from there we're gonna get going okay all right so you also need some heat resistant tape um, because you want to tape your image to the sublimation print I also use a um, brayer because the rolls that I get end up creating air bubbles everywhere. So I just like to kind of roll out the air bubbles a little bit before I tape. If you hear a dog barking in the background, ignore it. All right, so there we go. And then I'm just going to take my image face down on top of the white adhesive vinyl. I like to kind of take it off of the edge a little bit. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. It's super rolly, so <laughs> I don't want to remove it. And then I've got some tape already prepped here. I'm just gonna tape the edge. I'll show you in just a second what it looks like when it's all taped up. So face down on top of the vinyl. All 
I use a piece of tape on every side to prevent it from moving so that there's no ghosting or shadowing of any kind. Super rolly. So I moved it off of the edges a little bit here because sometimes it does shrink and I want to avoid it shrinking too much. All right, and then on my press, I already have a sheet of parchment paper on the bottom to protect my cushy part. And then I have a piece of parchment paper for the top as well. So you're gonna put both on there. You wanna put it on your press with the vinyl on the bottom and your prints on the top. You can see here I have a sub facing me and that's the direction that you want it to go. So I'm gonna move my press over just a little bit, place this on the press on the mat, put my parchment paper over it, and if you have any tips on how to get these stupid things to not be so rolly, I'm listening because this is the most annoying thing ever. So I burnt myself more numbers more times than I can count because of it. All right, now you're going to put the press on top. Light pressure, you do not need a ton of pressure. And I'm actually gonna lift it up just a little bit, press the timer. Let that go for the full 25 seconds. And then while that's going, I'm going to start putting the other image on the vinyl. Again, face down. I like to use kind of an anchor of some sorts. Right now I'm using my cell phone as an anchor to keep the vinyl down while I'm taping it. <clears throat> you do not want this to go any longer than 25 seconds. So as soon as it's done, lift it up, turn it around. Pull it off of the press and it's very hot when you do that. So just set that one to the side. Let it cool before you pull it off. Let it cool before you pull it off. Um, one, because it's stupidly hot. And I thought that I cut eight pieces of tape, but I only cut six. So we're gonna make this work. I'm just gonna do the two long edges here. go and then we're gonna do the same thing with this one super rolly turn this out pull this off like flat the tape does not work if you stick it to the parchment paper I tried that all right same thing for the clear just kind of Put it on there and then press and push the timer. While that goes, we're going to take a peek at this one, make sure it's as dark and vibrant as I want it, and it's not. So sometimes you'll get it where it looks like this. We don't want it like that. We want it to be very vibrant. So I'm gonna press this again after it cools. Let it cool completely because if you press it right after pressing it, it's going to melt. Don't want to do that, so let it cool, let it get back down to temperature, and then press it again. Lift. And this one's going to be the same exact thing. I would rather have my press set at a lower temperature for a lower time than melt my vinyl. So, and I'd rather press twice than melt my vinyl. So I only lifted that one corner, so there should be no shadowing here. If there is, I'm not too concerned. These are just practice runs. So. Just going to do it again, same amount of time because it is completely cooled. Maybe just a few seconds less, maybe 20 seconds instead of 25 seconds. Now see the clear transferred completely. So that one's gonna be good to go. Oh yeah, it's perfect, I'm so excited. So once it's completely cool, I wanna keep an eye on that. I'll show you in a second. <laughs> once it's completely cool, I did 20 seconds. So I cut it off at five. Then you'll peel off, whoo. Should probably use a heat glove to turn that off. Move it back and away from the edge. So I don't do it now, I'll forget. Put this over here. And now we're gonna peel this one off. So there was an air pocket on this one, unfortunately. And I'm gonna show you what happens when there's an air pocket. 
when there's an air pocket on the clear, you get some weird looking images. I could press again and get rid of them, but they look like that. So I am actually going to show you what happens if you press again after lifting. It's gonna ghost. It's already bust anyway, so why not? Let's turn this guy back on. Turn this around. Put it on the plate. It should still be warm, so I'm not gonna worry about waiting. Push that in. And press away. Let it go. This guy should be good to go. I'm actually going to cut the edge here because I don't want to waste the vinyl. Much better. Ah! Now you can hear it like pulling off. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Sometimes. happens is I have kids so I want to make sure that's away from the side so sometimes what happens is the coating that's on your um, paper gets transferred over to this when you press <clears throat> why that is I have no idea honestly but what I do is if it takes some of the glossiness away I'll spray it with this stuff, Mod Podge acrylic sealer. Um, but first, I will, after I cut, I will wipe it down after it dries for 24 hours. I'll wipe down the whole thing and sometimes that brings the glossiness back. If it doesn't, then I spray it with that sealer and this is the outcome of that sealer. It's pretty cool really works well all right so we're gonna go over and go ahead and cut this guy and go from there all right give me one second let me turn you all righty i don't know if you can see my machine or not let's tilt you down just a little bit there you go all right so there's the machine got my prints over here might help if i turned my computer on huh ignore my messy desk Got a lot going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and select printable sticker paper as my setting. So that was printable sticker paper. I know I'm like way over here, but that's okay because you're not gonna be focused on me. You're gonna be focused on printing. So this guy is all ready to go. You're going to put this on the paper. First, I wanna make sure that I have it facing the right direction and I don't, so I need to cut it down. Where's my scissors? I lost my scissors. Hold on. I'm going to turn you over just a tiny bit so that you can see me in the camera too. I don't know where my scissors went, so we're going to use the cutter. There we go. Now we're gonna turn this, put it on here. Doesn't matter if it's perfect on the mat, as long as it's facing the same direction. <clears throat> All right, so we have it on the mat, facing the right direction. <clears throat> My Cricut's way over here across the table. Let's bring that bad boy all this way so that I can reach it. All right, so. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the Cricut. I have printable sticker paper selected. <clears throat> While that's going, we are going to see what the outcome of this catastrophe was. Now it's printing. And actually, kind of turned out pretty awesome. So that second press, really really did the trick on this one look how vibrant that is that is crazy <clears throat> it does have a little bit of what i was referring to as far as that um a sub paper peeling off onto it 
Not a huge deal whatsoever, but you do not want to wipe it down with anything wet for at least a few hours. Um, that way it can really set into the vinyl. If I was to wipe it down now, it would um, smear some of the ink and we don't want that. So actually turned out pretty cool. You can kind of see around the cat where there was a little bit of ghosting, <laughs> but not too bad, not too shabby. I'll take it. All right, so that's gonna cut rid of this. Ignore all my mess. I was in the middle of trying to get a workout started and I decided I wanted to do a video. So we're going to go ahead and cut this one too. Because it actually looks pretty darn cool. Actually, the clear is much more vibrant than the white. I think I should have maybe done a second. Well, I did a second. Maybe a third press. I don't know. But I like the clear better so far. But you'll see when um, the clear prints, it's going to, so it kind of like makes it transparent. So it's not as vibrant but this is one this was the first one that i tried and that's how i discovered that it worked <laughs> all right and this one's all done we're gonna pull this off while this one goes all right now you should just be able to pull that off of your mat i like so and I have it set to default pressure. Um, if you did just a little bit more pressure, it would probably cut these all the way through, but it doesn't for me. And I don't, I don't know why I didn't do more pressure like I normally do, but this should, if you use the sticker, printable sticker paper setting, it should cut almost all the way through where you could just pull it off like so. there we have it printed sticker now it'll be much more vibrant when I clean it off um if I had some water in here I'd show you but I don't have any water but when I wipe it off you can see kind of right there where it's not super glossy when I wipe that off it's going to be even more glossy and then if I wanted it to be um really glossy um I would use that acrylic sealer spray but it's definitely got some of that paper left on it, so I'll definitely be wiping that off. And you're gonna do the same thing with the rest. If you wanted to do a full sheet and not have them separated, you can just do less pressure. So if you want it to cut all the way through, more pressure, you want it to cut <clears throat> just the vinyl, less pressure. That's how that one works. Oh, I can show you. So I did these a couple days ago and I have already wiped them down. So you can see how the glossiness comes back. Woohoo! Super cute. All right, that one's all done cutting. I already showed you this one. So we're going to go over to this one and show you what it looks like. Oh, super sticky mat. Yeah, you can just use <laughs> the blue mat for these. I only have one blue mat currently that's clean, so I use whatever mat's in hand. All right, so same thing. If you want to make it a little bit easier to pull off, you just bend it. Maybe. Maybe, but... This is what I wanted to show you anyway. Oh my goodness. It doesn't want to release. There we go. See, you can just pull off all the negative. 
but you can see here the black it's actually way more vibrant than i expected Apparently the clear paper is much thicker than the white paper is, the backing. Because it doesn't want to come off. There we go. She got mad hustle and a dope soul, homie. <laughs> Alright, so what I wanted to show you was when you peel it off, I don't want to peel it all the way off, it's pretty transparent. So, this would be good for a white cup. If you use epoxy, it's better than a water slide because it's not going to slide off. I have horrible luck with water slides. Horrible. All right. So <clears throat> there you have it, my friends. That's how you sublimate onto JPI blanks. Put the link in the description there for you. Clear and white adhesive vinyl. Same process, everything for Oracle 651. Um, I just decided to go with the house vinyl because one, I love JPI blanks and two, it's cheaper. So why the heck not, right? <laughs> so that's all I've got for you today. I just wanted to jump on here, show you how to make some decals using adhesive vinyl and sublimation. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel for much more tutorials and awesomeness. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.